And we're here tonight to bring you some very, very good information from the Bible. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and find it and get it and a piece of paper and a pencil. And we're going to give you a lot of good information. We're going to be sharing some teaching from the scriptures for the first half hour. And then we're going to take some phone calls the second half hour of the program. Because anytime you get to talking about somebody about money and giving money who hasn't dealt with their sins first, then automatically it becomes a stumbling block for them. And it makes them want to just get up and not even hear anymore that's being said. Amen. Pastor Tony, you want to add to that? Well, I mean, it's uh, it's a sacrilege. It's uh, it's it's the height of uh, of blasphemy to come to church and all you hear is about money and and nothing about the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, uh, it's 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 not ungodly. I'm going to share a secret with, with you, my friends. If you want to know one of the secrets to successful ministry, it's not about learning the 10 ways you can fleece the flock or the 20 ways you can get your breakthrough or your financial blessing. We give everything away for free without expecting anything back. Do you hear any explosions? <laughs> I know it's, it's uh, unprecedented for some people to hear that. Unbelievable to some, yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, the Bible says he uh, who waters will himself be watered. You have to pretty much throw out the doctrines of the Bible to build a Rick Warren purpose-driven kind of church. The prophet Isaiah describes people with itching ears gathering smooth-talking preachers to themselves who say to the seers, you must not see visions. And to the prophets, you must not prophesy to us what is right. Speak to us pleasant words. Speak illusions. Jeremiah speaks in the same way. He says, an appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule on their own authority, and my people love it so. Did you hear that? And my people love it so. Pastor Tony, when are Nigerian Christians going to stand up oh. and tell their pastors, do not speak any more lies to us, speak a sound, sound doctrine, teach a sound doctrine in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the love of Christ? Pastor Joe, I weep. It's, it's sad. It's so sad. And the desire that we have is that people should read the Bible and truly know that there are many deceivers, so many deceivers. Uh, it's so sad. And we just... I didn't know what to say. I weep whenever I hear about this. What, this. what difference do it make if your whole body is healed or if you have a house or you're eating good and, and, you, and you get a car and a nice job and then you die and you go to hell? Well, Amen. And also, you and I were talking earlier today where the Apostle Paul predicted that in the last days they will call gain godliness. Yes. And this is what's happening today. And the, Jesus said, the, an evil and an adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given. Uh, Hello? Yes? When many people in Nigeria, when they're in any problem or when they're praying, they cover themselves with the blood of Jesus. Is it right? Okay, I'll, we'll, we'll answer your question in just a second. And is it right to shout the blood of Jesus? Is it right to, to shout the name of Jesus? Or not the name, but the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, besides the body of Jesus, are the sacrifices for, the, for our sins. Okay, There has been a practice going on in many churches in Nigeria and elsewhere. Nigerians cannot be blamed for all of the abuse of this practice, where they, where they use the blood of Jesus like a protective apron, where if you shout the blood of Jesus and claim the blood of Jesus and speak the blood of Jesus, it becomes like a protective garment around you where Satan cannot penetrate. Now, that is not taught in the Bible. That mentality is rooted in mysticism and superstition.
Shepherd Hill Baptist Church by using the facility which they gave us, um, gave, gave to us free. And we thank God for that. <clears throat> so we hope to start at 10. So we have a few minutes just for us to, uh, to pray. Thank the Lord for bringing us all together, uniting us, and giving us this, this vision. And we are so expectant because the days are evil. He says we should not give up. We should not give up. We must keep working while we stay. We never give up. So the little effort we are making, let's call upon him to, to help us. We need his spirit. We need his spirit. And he has gone ahead of us, given us mercies, brought you to here in spite of the difficulties, and has kept us up to this hour. And has brought people, what sheep and I hope no goats. <laughs> so sheep to be fed, to be corrected, to be warned and so on. So we have to look up to him to help us. But let's pray. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would be in our midst, that you would bless the conference, Lord, that you would anoint the speakers, oh Lord, that they would share a word from heaven that would bless our hearts and bless those who come. So Lord, undertake for this meeting, bring out many visitors today. We pray, Lord, that you would be in our midst, that you would just undertake for all the speakers and for all the guests. And we pray this in our Savior's name. Amen. Are there practical, biblical ways we can be instruments of justice? Injustice. Uh, instruments of, of, okay, Brother, brother Adamo? Well, uh, okay, everyone. My my little comment. Speak up. My little comment on this is this: we should be mindful of the biblical standards. As long as the government does not contradict the biblical standard, it is what God expects of us. Where we see any contradiction from any leadership that contradicts the standards of the scripture, we are not to submit to such standards. A simple example is this bribery. You know, when you meet a policeman on the road, whoever, those who demand some money, to me, I tell them, you are the government to me. So if they demand bribery, the government then is demanding bribery to you. What does the Bible say to, about bribery? I think curse is he who demands, and curse is he who gives. Who would you choose to obey? Amen. Thank you. Okay, let me add something to this. There are practical ways in which we can be instruments of righteousness and judgment, or justice, exposing the unrighteousness and injustice of the government and their officers. The Lord Jesus told us how to react to the world and to officials in the government. He says, we are the light of the world. Uh, a light uh, is not put under the table, but is put on the top of the table and shines so everyone can see. And this is what the scripture says in 1 Peter 2.18. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear. And we can include in this, servants or citizens, be submissive to your government, okay? Not in unscriptural commands to worship a false god, but in all things lawful, be submissive, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. For this is commendable if because of conscience toward God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. This is what Harry was talking about. Here we are as citizens. The government comes in and says, obey this law or we will beat you or we will jail you. We tell them, Gently, suffering grief wrongfully, we, because of conscience toward God, Zechariah, we cannot submit to this unjust law. But without criticizing them and speaking evil against them, we have to say, I'm sorry, I cannot obey my God, and my Bible says no. And if they beat us, like the magistrates beat Paul and Silas, remember? And they took them to jail, and uh, we will be a witness to these people in our attitude, in our response, in our disposition of the light of the gospel. 
because people do not react with love towards their enemies. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to them that despitefully use you. Now please, this is Brother George Tate, who's also with our missionary group. He lives in Long Beach, California. He and I are friends for almost 20 years. Brother George? Yeah, I just want to say something. I know the understanding is that since governments are ordained of God, then why aren't they beneficial to the Christians? Okay, well the point is that governments are ordained of God to restrain evil in a society, okay, to control a nation or a country so that people can live. Now, a lot of times, now when you look at the Bible and we understand the times of Jesus, Jesus lived in a time when governments were not favorable to him, and he was God. They persecuted him, they, they, you know, they put him on the cross, all of his disciples and apostles were thrown to the dens, to the lions, or burned at the stakes. So, but that doesn't mean that, that they just completely disobeyed government. It's just the fact that they were obeying God rather than the governmental institution. And they were trying to live a quiet, honest life before God the best they could, even in the midst of persecution. And I think that that is what God would want you to do, is for you to live the best you can as a Christian in spite of the government or what's going on in it. Just do the best you can and follow God's word and God's laws. Amen. Thank you.
I hope you know him. Austin. Yeah. Okay. The gift of God is analyzed uh, through Christ Jesus. Uh, however, for us to get this eternal life, Jesus oh, let me have one. This to die for our sins. Uh, he died a shameful death in the hands of sinners. But the Bible says that he did all this so that we might be forgiven. Okay, we're well, living now. We're 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 living I <laughs> don't <laughs> video. No, I don't want to. Yeah, well, who believes in his death? Who believes that he died for our sins? Who believed that he was resurrected for our justification? The Bible says that if anybody believes this, that person will be saved. What does it mean? It means that the person's sins will be wiped out and the righteousness of Jesus will be given in exchange for that person's sin. Uh, although the person is not deserving, but although the person who believes in Jesus has not done any good things before, God will wipe his sin accounts clean and God will award him the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Nice. nice to meet you guys. And thank you guys for listening. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. So right now we're walking down the uh, streets of, uh, I can't even pronounce it, we in Nigeria. Uh, we just got done passing out wipers, right? Trying to get some more out, not get ran over by this, by this car at the same time. Here you go, sir. Here you go. And uh, it's been a real blessed trip, you know. God is really trying to do something new out here in Nigeria. He's trying to raise up his remnant church. There's a lot of false superstition going around here, but you know, we've been praying, the Lord has been leading us. We're really trying to, um, you know, give something out to the sheep. We're trying to feed the sheep and not entertain the goats. So, hey, did you get one? Yeah, okay, you got one?
Would you like the good news? Yes. Be careful. Okay. God bless you. Have a great evening. May I give this to you? Here, one more. Gospel, the good news of the gospel. Sir, may I? Good news. This man was in the training this morning. <laughs> oh, brother. God bless you. God bless. Okay. Good to see you. It's a small world, isn't it? <laughs> we saw him in the training this morning. Yeah. He lives. Wow. He, he lives. Okay. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> God sends people to us from everywhere. Yeah. yeah Young man. Fun. We have to uh, share the cake together. <coughs> Pastor Joe. Oh my goodness. Pastor Joe. Please come in. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy of his name. Which is him? Thank you, CBC Saints, for your love. For your, we have to face together. Okay. Face, turn, turn this way. <clears throat> you gotta turn it yes. counterclockwise. Yes. yes. Should I? Should let's kneel down. Yes. On behalf of Sovereign Grace Bible Church, Pastor Joe, we love you. We love CBC. <laughs> I'm making this presentation to tell you how much we love you. Sweet cake. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. So please uh, capture this and we thank the Lord for everything. We love you. Yes, everybody say we love you. We love you. We love you. Are you trying to make me cry? No. <laughs> yes. On behalf, we could stand up. <laughs> well, on behalf of the members of Christ Bible Church and the team of eight, of which I am only one member, Brian and Sandra, Danny and Eddie, George and Harry, and G, Brother G. I speak for all of us. It has been an amazing blessing to be with all of you. Since our last visit, we have met many new friends and we have felt very welcome and i thank god for all of the fellowship and the care and the hospitality from many of the members of the church who have taken care of me and all my brothers and sisters that have come here from america we have felt the love of god and we are true brethren um true kindred spirits god bless all of you amen thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Mm. Now, I take over. <laughs> On behalf of Christ Bible Church and Sovereign Grace Bible Church, we want to say, Pastor Tony, we love you. And it is your birthday, is it the Tuesday? I'm not going to say how old you are, but it's very close 21. to 69 years old. <laughs> and we want to say... Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pastor. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Come again next year. Thank you. I look at Nigeria and I think this is a massive mission ground. 
this is a massive mission ground. If you look at places like the UK, for example, Nigeria has missionaries going to the UK, but what are they taking with them there? They're taking a false gospel there. They're going to other parts of Africa. If you go down to, to Kenya, to South Africa, to Zambia, uh, to Ghana, there are all these Nigerian style churches opening up then. They're all taking a false gospel. And that, that bothers me that as aggressively as we are trying to take the true gospel out, there are some other people taking a false gospel out, probably even faster than we are. And, and, and I think that creates an opportunity for us to approach God and just pray about these things and pray that God would empower us to go out and teach and minister to people and His Holy Spirit will move in as we preach the word. So that that's really what's on my heart. I'm not sure how we will do these things, but I believe that there's a reason why I'm here at the moment and mm. for the period I'm here, I believe God is going to teach me and show me how I can um, maximize my time. So, we are in a country where there is so much hunger and so much poverty. And the problem is not poverty, it's not hunger, the problem is sin. When sin is removed, every other thing is settled. There's joy. I, I, I tell them, Lazarus went to heaven. Hey, are you as bad as Lazarus? So if Lazarus can get to heaven, then who are you in Nigeria? Mm. So no one has an excuse. I don't care if you're in Somalia or Nigeria. If Lazarus with his sores in his leg, dogs licking it, make to, made it to heaven, and you, you, you don't have an excuse. Mm. So the problem is not uh, promising them how to feed and how to eat. It is bringing the God, true gospel, and that's what the false gospel has come to do. It made the work so much so tedious, so water down everything. The devil will not disturb you from preaching the gospel. Look at we we have we had preaching more, no one has hindered us throughout. That's not the problem. The problem is they go to church on Sunday and their pastors will take the Bible from them with his word and give them what they think God has told them. And it's hard to get that off them because they see the result in the life of their pastors. They see them in big houses and big cars. Mm -hmm. They see you, you're not rich. But you know, we walk by faith. Our inheritance is in heaven. The reproach of Christ that, that Moses went for was because, was, was because of a reward. Mm -hmm. And no eyes can see that reward. Mm -hmm. And he didn't see it. And the Bible said he lived as seeing the invisible. And so it's hard to make them see the invisible. Mm -hmm. It's hard. They see the riches of Egypt, of Nigeria, and of Lekki. They come around Lekki and they go back to their area and say, Whoa, I want to get there. Mm. But nobody sees, except the Lord opens the eye of these guys to see that what we are living for is invincible. Our Savior is invincible, but it's alive. Mm. Then, so the false gospel in our country is one big issue that's burning my heart. And if I have my way, perhaps help out where I can help. And then there's, there's also a prayer that, uh, that and we pray that in the church, I know it's a desire of the pastors that we as a church will grow in our knowledge and love for the Lord, will grow in the sacrifices that we're able to make, giving ourselves as living sacrifices, and being willing, being willing to suffer for His namesake, whatever the cost is. Whatever the cost is, you know, and it has to come with that full conviction that and Paul says in Romans, I think it's chapter 15 or so that I think no 13, where he says, whether we in life or in death, we are the Lord's. Mm. You know, understanding that we are his. Amen. And um, we want to stand before the Lord joyfully in that day and give a good account of ourselves. Amen. You know. Of course, as unworthy servants. Uh, 1496, taxi to the penalty box and hold. Your gate is occupied next to the 757.